Howdy folks, it's Not Jay from Not Jay's Tabletop Gaming, and this video brings us to Ocean Thunder, where I show you the basics of the turn sequence for the game. Uh, some of y'all have been asking about it, so I decided to go ahead and focus on it during this short little video. Hope you enjoy, and uh, let's get going. Ocean Thunder is the World War II naval combat game that my best friend Chris Copeland and I decided to create almost, well, at this point, more than 30 years ago. We decided that uh, the games that uh, were available just didn't do what we wanted them to do, so we decided to go ahead and create our own game. And Ocean Thunder is what grew from those afternoons and weekends of uh, time together. So what I've done with this video is gone through and looked at each one of the segments in a turn to kind of give you an idea of how the game is played. So segment one is torpedo launch with short range torpedo impact. That's anything uh, in the torpedo path six inches or less. Segment two is has first half of movement and then a spotlight and radar sweep if in the advanced rules for night combat using spotlights or you know, getting that, that bonus to hit when using uh, radar uh, distance location. Segment three is gunnery combat. All ships get to shoot. And then once that's completed, mid-range torpedo impact is, is taken care of. And that's anything along the path of torpedoes from 6 inches to 15 inches. Then we've got segment four. That's the second half of ship movement, damage control is taken care of at that point, and then long range torpedo impact, and that's anything from 15 inches to 30 inches along the torpedo path. So that is the turn broken down by segments. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at each segment uh, more closely individually. And we can see that in segment one, it says torpedoes are fired, and what that entails is you take a marker, net, place it next to the ship firing the torpedoes, and then you put an aim point 30 inches out where you want the torpedoes to be going toward. And that draws a line that will be utilized at the short, medium, and long range segments to see you know if there are any ships in the target zone so short range is immediately looked at and that's any ship that is from the point of launch to the six inch mark on that aim line and at that six inch point it's creates a cone that is one inch wide at the, and it's one inch to each side of that line, so actually it's two inches uh, on that line. So any ship within that cone is going to have the chance of being impacted by torpedoes, so you resolve that. And we'll talk about that in more detail when we discuss torpedoes in a video. That damage that torpedo damage is calculated immediately, so it does affect anything beyond this point. Most everything is is simultaneous. Movement is considered simultaneous. The, uh, the, the gunnery is simultaneous, so it doesn't matter who shoots first. If you shoot and you hit your opponent and knock out a turret or sink a ship, that turret or that ship gets to return fire if it has not already fired this turn. So uh, gunnery is simultaneous. So th having torpedoes do damage now before movement uh, is, is pretty critical. So that's segment one. Segment two, ships removed half the distance calculated for the turn. Uh, and basically what that means is, let's say you've got the USS Missouri, her max speed is 16 inches, but you're only going to go, say, 10 inches because you're at combat speed. And 
with, with going 10 inches, you'll move 5 inches during this segment, and then 5 inches in the last movement segment. And it just, it just works out this, the way uh, I like it, uh, that you're, the, the gunnery is happening in the middle of movement. It also allows for that short, medium, long you know, range. Short range torpedoes before you move, medium after you move half the distance, long range after you move the full distance. So that's why I've kind of broken, that's why I broke movement into two distinct segments. Once your first half of movement has been completed, you'll then do a spotlight and radar sweep. Spotlights will allow you to, you know, go from a hidden blank or, or a, a hidden silhouette to a to see exactly what the ship is also you know for night combat it does allow you to remove the negative that you have there for firing uh, at night radar whether it's day or night what it does for you is gives you a bonus to hit uh, because you're using radar distance uh, tracking basically so you're going to be able to have a better you'll, you'll have a better uh, calculation on firing a better uh, solu firing solution with radar segment three is when gunnery happens and and that's a process where you measure the distance from ship to ship and from ship to ship is base is bridge to bridge so it doesn't matter whether you've, you're on bases or not, you're firing at the distance based off of your uh, bridge to bridge distance. You'll determine the range scale, you know, what range band are you firing in, short, medium, or long. There's also an extreme short and an extreme long, but you'll rarely use those. Determine number of guns firing, it says here, depends on the range. And that's just a percentage of the guns. If you're at short range, you get like 100%, medium range, 75%, etc. Uh, I haven't got those numbers exactly worked out, but I'm working on them. And then roll to straddle, one die for each gun fired. So if you, again, we go back to the Missouri, you're firing a full broadside, you're at short range, you're going to go ahead and get all nine guns, so you're rolling nine dice of the appropriate type. Once you've quote unquote straddled the ship, you know that you're within that damage box. You'll roll location on the damage log grid using a D20 and a D6 to find out cross referencing those two dice to see exactly where on the ship damage uh, log the shell is actually falling. Again, I'll go into more detail and, and have examples of this in the uh, in you know future videos the and then you just uh, roll for damage based off of where the shell lands you'll repeat this process for each ship that has the ability to draw a line of sight to fire then you'll have mid-range torpedo impact that's going to be six inches to 15 inches the base of that six inches is going to be at that that two inch to each side of your aim line uh, out to uh, two inches to each side of the aim line at 15 inches. Any ship within that cone from six to 15 inches, uh, two inches wide to, or uh, yeah, two inches wide to four inches wide has the potential of being hit, resolve the, those torpedo uh, impacts, and then calculate as necessary. So that's segment three. Segment four, ships are moved their final amount the remaining half of the distance calculated for the turn. You'll roll for any damage control parties on the damage control chart that you've deployed. And then torpedo impact for long range, that's 15 inches to 30 inches. Again, at 15 inches, your base is two inches to each side of the target line or the aim line. At 30 inches, it's three inches to each side. So you've got a cone, again, a cone that is from 15 inches to 30 inches from the original uh, point of launch and it's from four inches wide to six inches wide at the very end so any ship 
you will calculate torpedo damage um, as ne necessary. So there you have it. All four segments, really quick, really easy. Uh, if you've got any questions, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Um, there is going to be more detailed videos that we're going to go into. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, let, me know, uh, let me know what you think. So there you have it, the turn sequence of Ocean Thunder, the uh, World War II naval game that I created, oh man, 30 years ago now. Uh, it's been a work in progress f for all that time, and it seems to be getting some traction again. We'll see what happens over the next couple of weeks and months, but it might just actually uh, get out there, so who knows? Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, this quick little video. We're going to see more of Ocean Thunder in the future as I show you how the game is played. So, until next time, we'll see you on the flip side. <laughs>